the Reap Weaponry's SCY Bullpup Kit, a chassis that converts a mil-spec AR-15 lower into a bullpup platform without permanent modification. First things first, let's talk about my relationship with Reap. One day, while I was scrolling through Instagram, I stumbled upon the Reap Weaponry's page and I was intrigued right away. I've loved seeing the Malyuk Bullpup AK conversion popping up during the conflict in Ukraine, and seeing one for the AR spiked my interest right away. They had just made a post that they were getting ready to release the unit at SHOT Show, so I sent them a message saying I was really interested in trying it. Following SHOT Show, they reached back out to me and were kind enough to send over a unit for me to test and share my findings with you guys. I'm under no obligation to review the kit positively, and there was no exchange of money. While I did receive the unit at no cost to review, I will share my honest findings with you guys as I test it. So why would somebody be interested in something like this? Well, the most obvious advantage is to keep the overall operating length down without sacrificing barrel length. You can see that directly when you compare it to my 8.5 inch pistol. While similar in overall lengths, the SCY kit has a 6 inch longer barrel. By moving the trigger group forward, it also changes the length of pull, making it feel most comfortable to shoot in its most compact form. Typically, the Troy M7A1 stock would need to be fully extended in order to keep it from feeling too choked up or keeping your wrist at an extreme angle. But in the SCY chassis, you can keep the stock fully collapsed without issue. Contrary to how I use the PDW brace, which I prefer to keep fully extended while shooting in order to keep my strong hand from being at an uncomfortable angle. So in practice, you can see that this 14.7 inch build in the SCY chassis ends up feeling much shorter than even an 8.5 inch build, while touting a 6 inch longer barrel, giving you back some of the lost velocity and range that normally comes from chopping your barrel down. You can shrink the rifle's length even further when going around tight corners or staircases simply by throwing the stock over your shoulder instead of into your shoulder pocket. Because the trigger control is so far forward, I can still easily actuate the safety and fire controlled, comfortable shots while collapses fall. to break down the eight and a half inch pistol in a similar fashion, I would end up needing to run my thumb precision rifle style, and without an ambidextrous safety, this can become a headache. Not impossible by any means, just something I noticed that was a pretty neat win for the bullpup kit. You can even accurately shoot the rifle one-handed in the kit. Compared directly to another 14.7 inch build with a light and laser at the end of the rail, the difference is astounding. While I would be able to pop off a couple suppressive rounds with a setup like this, a sustained one-handed fight isn't in the cards for a typical AR. If I needed to be able to drag a wounded buddy to safety, I would still be able to get the rifle up, get a good sight picture, actuate the safety, fire downrange, actuate the safety again, and sling the weapon. If you compare that directly to running a typical AR-15 setup with the magazine in front of your strong hand, plus your light and laser near the end of the rifle, Holding it up like this for a long period of time really isn't going to happen, but with the bullpup kit, the center of mass is so close to your body, I could do this all day. It almost feels like a really large Uzi or something. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys the install process here on YouTube, but it was pleasantly simple. Reap includes a video that shows you step-by-step -step instructions that made the whole process easy to follow. It took me about 30 minutes from start to finish to install the kit. The SCY uses a transfer bar that runs the length of the kit that interfaces with your trigger and your lower. There's also an adjustable bushing that allows you to fit it with any kind of trigger you already have in your lower. I have a flat-faced Rise Armament DTOM trigger in my lower, and I haven't had any issues with running a flat-faced trigger instead of a curved one. The transfer bar is very smooth, and paired with the DTOM trigger in my lower, the SCY is very snappy. I 
I certainly can't outrun the bar. Because it doesn't modify the safety system, you essentially have two safeties. The standard safety in your lower and the added safety in the new trigger group. I end up running the standard safety on fire and I use the trigger group safety while running drills. If I'm going to sling the weapon for any length of time, I will fire off both safeties just to be safe. The new group also mounts along your M-lock rail via two additional takedown pins. This helps add rigidity to the whole entire kit. I did add the forward control designs ambidextrous mag release to my lower after installing the kit for the first time. I personally found doing mag changes with the standard mag release too awkward. Having to release and pull your spent magazine with my strong hand, throw that out, rotate the gun, switch hands, grab a fresh magazine, pull that out, put that in the gun, release my mag, re-engage. It was just too many steps for me to want to think about during a reload. But for 70 bucks, it's an easy fix. The SCY kit also adds a slightly oversized, slightly flared magwell, and this causes one of the compatibility issues I have noticed. Gen 3 P mags. Any mag that has this extended rear lip that the Gen 3 P mags has won't fit because of the flared magwell. Gen 2 P mags work great, Lancer mags work great, Stan eggs work great. Anything that doesn't have that lip will work great. That's a Lancer. Here's a Gen 2 and it's smooth along the back here. That's totally fine, not going anywhere. But with the Gen 3 P mags, that little lip hits the flare and it just won't go no matter what. It just ain't going in there. Prior to getting to play with the SCY kit, my only experience with bullpups has been with airsoft rifles. I had an AUG AEG as my main skirmish weapon for years, and I never minded the Ergos, so adjusting to the bullpup platform already felt pretty natural to me. Especially after adding in that ambi mag release, that made reloads feel natural, and I don't feel like I'm much slower doing speed reloads with the SCY than compared to a standard AR. Ergos feel about as good as a bullpup could feel, I think. I was concerned with the system feeling weak. I've played around with a Glock PDW conversion kit, and while it was a fun range toy, that's about where it ended for me. That particular kit felt like it might fall apart on me at any moment, or just bend if I added any real stress to the thing. Once I pulled the SCY chassis out of the box, though, those fears dissipated. The kit feels really substantial, and doesn't feel hollow in the way that some plastic kits really can not feel. It's hard for me to even criticize the design too much, because where the flaws are, in my opinion, are simply with the AR, trying to be a bullpup. One of the main things being the buffer tube, and the second being the charging handle. If I built a rifle from the ground up with the SCY in mind, I would for sure go with a bufferless system and a side charging upper, something like the BRM-180, where then you could cut the system right here and even put like a rubber butt pad or something on the end, put a cheek riser up here, and you wouldn't have to worry about your charging handle or the length of pull being affected by having to have a buffer. Having to use a buffer tube for the AR to function means you can only get the length of pull as short as the buffer system you run. The lower I chose to build on uses the Troy M7A1 super short buffer tube and stock system. So the whole system only adds about four inches to your rifle and aesthetically kind of looks like a cross between the Hellion and the RDB stock when it's mounted on the SCY kit to me. The M7A1 positions the length of pull to be really comfortable for me when fully collapsed. As I shoulder the SCY fully collapsed like this, the charging handle becomes a chin index for me. If I ran lower optics, it would be a more traditional nose to charging handle position, but I prefer these higher optics for running comms or night vision, whatever. So it ends up being a chin index for me.
I run the Radian Raptor charging handle and its smooth construction doesn't bother me even after a full day of shooting. So what is it like shooting this thing? It's actually really fun to shoot. Everyone I let play with it at the range had a great time and it was for sure a conversation starter. Here goes nothing, boys. This upper has a mid-length gas system which is already incredibly smooth, and you combine that with being able to grip the rifle comfortably at the extreme end of the rail, makes for a system that feels like it has no recoil at all, even after long strings of sustained fire, which the SCY kinda begs for. So let's take a closer look at this finished build. An A2 muzzle device pinned and weld to a 1 in 7 twist 14.7 inch cold hammer forged FN barrel, a hollow sun 117 IR infrared aiming laser, a Nobuhiro M600C white light and remote pressure switch, the Onyx Arms stubby vert grip, a Palmetto State Armory upper receiver and 13.5 inch MLOC handguard, slate black industry rail covers, a Reptilia Core 1.93 dot mount with a Vortex Spitfire 5 times prism and Venom red dot combo optic setup. A Radian Raptor charging handle. The Troy M7A1 PDW stock and bolt carrier group. Forward control designs, ambidextrous mag release. A Rise Armament DTOM flat face trigger in my lower. And lastly, the Reap Weaponry's SCY bullpup chassis with a Tango Down BG18 pistol. So far, I've enjoyed the SCY kit, and I think it's more than just a range toy. I've only got about 500 rounds through the kit, but I haven't noticed any slop developing in the trigger. I was concerned the trigger bushing might loosen up over time, but with this many rounds down the pipe and performance remaining the same, I'm not too worried about it. With all the pistol brace drama, it could be an alternative way to get your hands on a shorter platform. Most of all, it's so refreshing to see something totally unique come out for the AR-15. Thinking outside the box like this keeps the industry pushing forward, and I'm all for it. For $4.99, the kit feels pretty reasonably priced. It gets you a whole new platform without having to spend the money that typically is associated with a bullpup. A Tavor, a Hellion, anything like that, they're all going to cost you way more than $4.99. A lot of people who build ARs, like me, have a few that they work on. They may swap uppers between a few different lowers, they may swap parts between. And having something like this, it changes one of those lowers from being just another AR that you can swap out barrel lengths and attachments on, to almost making it feel like an entirely new gun. You end up with a, a weapon platform that's unlike your typical AR-15 setup. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the SCY Bullpup Kit. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below on whether you think this thing rules or whether it's absolutely cursed. If you want to go the extra mile and share this video with one of your friends, we become instant homies. I appreciate you. If you're curious how I have my helmet, chest rig, or my AR set up, you can head over to my website, bargainbintactician.com. I have most of my builds listed there, and I will add more as I finalize them. You can also grab yourself some bargain bin gear while you're on my site. I have shirts, beanies, hats, hoodies, and jackets over there. And every dollar spent on my site goes right back into new gear to check out and share with you guys. Thanks again for spending your time with me. I hugely appreciate it. Until next time, bargain bin out.